they befouled the cannon in that video. Um, so, hi guys. Uh, if you're watching, we've got lots of room so you can come in. Um, today we're going to do some crossword puzzles with some different idioms. Um, idioms with the word check, food, uh, take idioms, life idioms, uh, maybe some others. See, we'll see how much time we have. But um, it'll get you to kind of think about some of the idioms you may already know. And also, I'll be teaching you some new ones and what they mean. So, we've already all introduced ourselves, I think. So, hi, Federico, Perkin, Perseus. Um, and hello if anybody else joins us. But I don't think we need to do introductions. We can just go right into our crossword puzzle. Um, I want to give you guys the link, but if I do that, you have to promise you won't cheat. No. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> no, I won't cheat. <laughs> because you can press solution and then you'll have the whole answer, and that is called cheating. So, can I trust you guys with the link? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's wait. try it with sharing my screen. The only problem is, um, it's really small. So I tried to make it bigger, but it's not really working out. Oh, I can see it. Can you see the, the words? The words? Hardly. Okay, yeah. but I'll, that's it's okay. I'll, t I'll tell you what they are. Um, let's see if I can make it a little bit better. Um, I'll turn down my resolution because that worked last time. Oops. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, it's good. Okay. Almost almost there. Wait for it. Okay. How's that? That's good. Good? Okay, cool. Um, the, you can see the link, obviously, so don't type it in. <laughs> it's cheating. Um, so these first ones are idioms that have to do with the word check. Okay? Um, this is... Uh, an intermediate puzzle on this website. Um, we'll do some advanced ones as well, but hopefully um, some of these idioms will be new and maybe you guys will already know some of them. So, number one across, um, an inventory of items. Checklist. Checklist, good. Can I type it? No. Don't reveal it. Don't reveal it. A checklist. So a checklist is when you have a list of things that you need to check off, an inventory. So if you're taking inventory like at work or something and you have a, bu a bunch of boxes to check off, that is called a checklist. Um, what about number, let's do number two down. Check in. Check in. Good. Register for a hotel room is to check in. Number three across. Post check date. No. No. Um, it comes from the idea that there's bad weather outside and you go to a grocery store and want to buy something, but they don't have any of it available, so they give you this to bring back next time. And it's like a little ticket. Checklist. Season ticket. I'll give you a hint. More. Yes. Okay, I shall reveal it. Rain check. Rain check. Oh, I've never heard Rain that. Check. Have no you heard idea. that before? No idea. No. no. So. A rain check is, oh gosh, I always forget. <laughs> so creepy. Looks like I have like black teeth. Creepy. Um, so a rain check is if you go to a grocery store and you saw an item in a catalog or their catalog that was supposed to be on sale and you're like, yeah, this is awesome. And you go to the grocery store to buy it and you get there and there's none left and you're like, oh. Then you go up to the counter and you say, where is that milk that was supposed to be on sale? I've been waiting for weeks. And they're like, oh, we're so sorry. And they write you a little ticket, and it's like a rain check is what we call it. And it allows you to come back the next week and still get it at the same price when they have more. 
disrespect to say like you can't make it for some plan. So say you and your friends are supposed to go out for dinner. You're like, oh, sorry, I got called into work. Can I get a rain check like this? Can I get a rain check? You might say that to your friend, meaning um, let's do it another time, basically. Is it a separate okay. word? Is it two? No. Ah. One word. Yeah. Right. Dictionary says different because. Well, maybe the dictionary is probably right then. Maybe it's two. I've always used it as one. Let's see what happens when I look it up. Rain check. Yeah, I guess it's two words. You're right. Or your dictionary's right. <laughs> so I'll take a rain check. Can I get a rain check? Okay. Turn my resolution back down. There we go. Okay, um, number four down. Checkup. Good. A doctor's examination is a checkup. What about five across? An unsigned bank paper. Blank check. Blank check. Good. Blank check. Blank check. Blank. Yeah, a blank check. It's just a check that you haven't filled in yet. <laughs> a blank check. Um, and sometimes you'll be asked, oh my gosh, I've got to stop doing that. Sometimes you'll be asked for a, a void check, um, a void check, or a void blank check from an employer. If they need your banking information, you just take a blank check and write void across it and give it to them. So they can't fill it in for themselves. Um, but then they get the banking information off of your check. Yeah, exactly. If you accidentally or give someone a blank check with your signature and everything, I mean, that's not a very good idea. They can just yeah. fill in their information and, like, go cash yeah. their check, right? You are doomed. Yeah, you're doomed. It's, you're screwed. Yeah, you probably shouldn't do that. Um, but it's okay if you've scribbled void across it because then it's uncashable. No one could cash it. Um, number six, pay for a hotel room and then leave. Check out. Check out. Yeah. To check out. Number seven. Are you okay? No. Oh, seven. In check. <laughs> yes, in check. Um, so in order, in check. To make sure that everything is in check just means you're making sure that everything is organized, it all looks good. Um, if you're a supervisor at work, you might kind of watch what everyone's doing and make sure that operations are running smoothly. That's making sure that everything is in check. Um, number eight, examine. Hmm. No, not that one. <laughs> you already know that there's check. Uh -oh. Yeah, that's true. Check. <laughs> no, that's no, that's there, please. It's no use. Over. Over, good. Uh, check over. Oh. So, like, you check over your essay before you hand it in. Or you can also say look, look over. Look over or check over. Over. Number nine. Make sure someone is okay. I'm saying, are you okay? Yes. <laughs> what is it called when you ask someone, are you okay? Say check they're feeling. On. Yeah, good. Check up on. Three Ooh, words. I check. Never heard that. Up on. You haven't? No. So to. Oh my gosh. So to uh, check up on someone is like, say they're at home sick, they're not feeling very well, and you go over to their house with like chicken noodle soup and, you know, tea or something. You're like, hi, I'm just checking up on you. I just wanted to make sure you're okay. So that's called to check up on someone, just to see how they're doing. Um, because it seems to help with the screen sharing. Uh, I think you should try without doing it. Maybe it doesn't affect... Oops. Yeah, 
told me about it yesterday, and then when I was doing it, it seemed to work better. But it might just be with bigger documents, like the PDF files that always get blurry. Um, I'll do it without, and tell me if it's if it looks fine. Okay. Um, number ten. The winning move in chess. Checkmate. Ah, for this one. Checkmate. <laughs> Checkmate. Good. And then it popped up saying, congratulations, you have completed the puzzle, but you guys can't see it. <laughs> Checkmate. Um, any questions about these idioms with check? No? Also in chess, you can say check. Yeah, you, you can also just check. say check. So you're, it's either check or checkmate. No, you no, know it's different. Right? When you say check, you're threatening the queen, but not winning the game. No, you're threatening the king. Yeah, uh, king, yeah. Yeah. Um, king. But checkmate means you win. They can't. Yeah. They can't move their king. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, let's take a look at another one. Um, what was the next one? Food? How about food? Where's food? Tunisia. Tunisia? No. I just want to do the idiom one since it's an idioms class. Food idioms. Here we go. Can you see it okay? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So let's start with number one. One who thinks he is best. Mm. Kahuna. Something, something to do with food. No. It's like a really old fashioned thing. Uh, I think I've heard that. Hot dog. Hot dog. Hot dog. So when someone thinks they're like the best in the world, they're um, hot dog. <laughs> it's, oh. it's really old fashioned. <laughs> we don't really which, say it anymore. It's kind of like from the 60s. <laughs> which century are you coming from? <laughs> okay. Um, number two. Strengthen. It's two words, four letters, and then two letters. Um, sometimes we use it to talk about people going to the gym. They go to the gym to... Check up. Something Bunk. up. Yes, up. Check up. Jack Bunk. up. But it has to be a type of food. Hmm. It starts with a B. Bean up. Beef. Beef. Oh, beef up. Up. Uh, so to beef up is like to go to the gym and work on your muscles, lift weights, try to make yourself stronger, and bigger, strengthen, is to beef up. Um, number three? Ah, uh, okay. Big enchilada. No. The top person. Big enchilada. That I don't think it fits, but that, <laughs> that's a good idea. The the big enchilada is a top person. This is the another one. It's cheese. um four words. Like this. Oops, oh that didn't work. I tried to do it with spaces so you can see. <laughs> I'll give you the first letter of each word. C of the C. Of, yeah, of the. Of. <laughs> something of the something. <laughs> it's related to corn. It has oh, something to do C with corn. C of the corn. No. There's a P. I'll just keep adding letters until you guys think of it. <laughs> Crown? Crown? Oh, no. Crown. I heard that, but I can't remember. Cream, good. Cream of the crop means you're like the best. You're the best that someone can find. Oh. Cream of the crop. So it's an expression related to corn, like the um, corn fields. The cream of the crop is like the best um, shucks of corn that you could find. So you use it to talk about people too, like 
uh, if you're interviewing a whole bunch of people, your boss might ask you, okay, so who is the cream of the crop? Who should we hire? Who is the big enchilada? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, let's look at number four. To be the best of something. Big cheese. Yeah, that's one, the big cheese. That's not the one here, though. Can you give us the when first you, letter? When you win something, it's three words. Um, it has that in the middle. I'll give you that. When you win something and you're really excited about it, you're the best. It has to do with a dessert product. <laughs> Top of the ice cream. Take the. What rhymes with cake? Cake. Cake. Yeah. <laughs> Take the cake. Take Have you heard that before? Oh. <laughs> okay, so if you if you win at a competition, you could say like, "Oh, I took the cake." Or someone, um, if you do something really amazing and you one up someone, there's another expression too to one-up someone. So if someone comes in and they're like, hey, look at this presentation. Like, it took me so long. I was up all night working on it. And then you come in with one that's like 10 times bigger and that looks way better. You're like, oh, well, look at my presentation, <laughs> right? That's hmm. like showing someone up or one-upping them. And then someone might say, wow, that one really takes the cake. Like, that one's better. Um, it's the best one. Uh, yeah, sure, Marco. If you guys are watching, you can come on in. We're just doing some crossword puzzles with idiot different idioms. Um, so that take the cake to be the best of something, the best one. Um, number six, strongly encourage. So if you're just joining us, um, these are all food idioms. So idioms related to food. Okay. To strongly encourage. It's two words, three letters, and then two letters. Ace, no. The second uh, word is on. Uh, Something on. I feel like you guys might know this one. So maybe you're with your friends and you're about to go cliff jumping and your friend is really, really scared, and you're like, oh, come on, do it, do it. Like, you have to do it. Come on, jump. What are you doing to your friend to encourage them? You're blank. Mm -hmm. No, it's the... Egg. Egg gone. Ah. Remember um, egging them on? To egg someone on? Have you heard that before? Yeah, so it's it's to strongly encourage. It's also sometimes like peer pressure. <laughs> so you're egging someone on, like, come on, all the cool kids are doing it. Come on, right? <laughs> so that's to egg someone on, try to get them to do something. Um, number five, high social class. Root, maybe oh. at the end. Sorry, just a second. I lost my document. Okay. Um, what did you say the last one was? Roots. Roots? Roots. Oh. <laughs> Rust. Crust. Crust. Bread. Cr no. <laughs> no. Not bread crust. High social class. What do you think of when I say high social class? Do you think of lower class? No. High. Uh, upper crust. Upper. Okay. So the upper crust of society is like the highest social class, the upper class. It's an expression to say that someone is very high class. Yeah, or wimp out. Um, upper crust, so the highest class of society. Usually we use this when we're kind of making fun of high class people. So it's usually used kind of to mock someone. 
say, oh, like, mm. they're so upper crust, or that's the upper crust of society acts in a certain way. Okay. Um, you guys know what crust is, right? Yeah. Like on a pie? It's the base of a pie. Yeah. Um, okay, let's look at number seven across. Um, a couple or pair that are the same. Something with pods? Yes. Something about pod. Something in a pod. Uh, two. Uh, two. Two. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> what what vegetable pod? comes in a pod? Peas. Yes. Yes. <laughs> two pieces in a pod. Two peas in a pod. Um, a couple that's the same. We also use it to talk about twins. So a pod of peas. You guys know what I mean when I say peas in a pod? Like literally? It's like a snap oh. pea. It has oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so two peas in a pod, it's like you're stuck together. You like love each other. You learned that one from Breaking Bad? Yeah. Um, two peas in a pod. So, Or you could say your two best friends might be like two peas in a pod. Um... Okay, let's look at number eight down. Fishy. Right. Pardon? Yes, it's right. Fishy. When something is fishy, it's suspicious. Or you sometimes say something like, I smell something fishy. Or something fishy is going on here. I mean, something suspicious. Okay, good. Uh, number nine, favorite thing. It's a bit British to say this. Oh. Cross. Three words. Three, oops. Three words. Can of the... No, not can. Cup of tea. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so you say, um, like, that's my cup of tea, or that's not yeah. my cup of tea. If someone um, asks you, like, yeah. like something, or they might be like, you like Justin Bieber? You're like, no, that is not my cup of tea. <laughs> More than that. So it's not something that you enjoy, not your cup of tea. Not my cup of tea, in the British accent. <laughs> Very bad one. Um, okay, good. Number nine, uh, silly. Something that's silly or cheesy. Hmm. What kind of food? Curry. Um. Curry, no. <laughs> Corny. Corny. Um. If something is really cheesy or silly, kind of ridiculous, you might be like, oh, that's so corny. Like when I said, hot dog, that was really corny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> really cheesy, um, kind of outdated. You could say something's very corny. Um, and last one, a poor loser. A poor loser. Sour vinegar? No. Yeah, it's sour. Good. Sour. Grapes? Yes. Sour grapes. Is that two word different? Sour and sour? Oh, I thought you said, I thought you were trying to say sour. <laughs> sore? Oh, sore. Yeah, it doesn't fit there. That's why I thought you meant sour. Sore <laughs> is like, ow, that hurt. <laughs> I'm sore. Sour oh, is so like, so. sour is like when you, like a lemon, like. Sore. Sore. Sour? 
versus sour. Sour sounds like this, sour versus sore or sore so like that. Sore. Yeah. Little pronunciation difference. Um, okay. Any questions about the food idioms? Mm. Okay. Uh, to... That was also apple of my eye. Yeah, that's another one. Apple of my eye. Was that one I taught you in that first class? <laughs> no. Not that one. Apple of my eye. There's lots of idioms related to food. Um, okay, so do you guys want me to go back and quiz you on Czech and food idioms, or do you want to do another crossword puzzle? Another one, I think. Okay. Um, next one. Oh, I keep exiting. I'm having issues today. Okay. Let's do take idioms. Take idioms. I think you guys will know some of these. And hi to everyone if you're just joining. We're just doing crossword puzzles with idioms. So these idioms are all involving the word take. Okay? So let's see how we can do with these ones. I'll probably make that even a bit bigger. Okay. So number one, to assume to be true or to expect. So what was that? Pardon? What idioms was that? Take. Take. So okay. each of these idioms has the word take in them. Take for granted. Good. Perfect. To take something for granted. Have you guys heard that one before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you assume something to be true or also we say um, maybe you're, you're very used to having a certain luxury and then it's taken away and you're like, wow, this is terrible. You might have taken that for granted, that luxury that you had. Um, not realized how important it was when you had it. Okay. Um, number two, omit. Take out. Oops. Sorry. One second. Take out. I want it work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, come on. To take out or to leave out is another. If you leave something out, you're omitting a detail. Or if you take something out, you're removing or omitting a detail. I need a swanky life in upper crust society. <laughs> <laughs> OK. You'll be a top dog or a hot dog. <laughs> um, OK. Number three. A surprise. Yeah. So it starts with take, and then the next word starts with an A. If a someone, part. no, not a part. Um, if someone shocks you and really surprises you with something, you might be taken a uh, awake. A a bath. <laughs> a back. A back. Taking a back. A and a back. back. Have you heard that one before? No. A back is actually um, one word. Taken a back like that. Um, so if someone surprises you, they're like, blah, and scares you, and you're like, whoa, and you jump back like that, that's where it comes from. To be taken aback. You don't have to literally jump like that, but <laughs> that's kind of the idea of the expression. Something startles you or scares you, freaks you out, then you could say that you're taken aback. You're very surprised. Um, did you say it's weird, but you? It's weird, but I know where I learned new words. Yeah, yeah you, every you have one a very of them. good memory. You have a good yeah, memory with so. that. I have like the worst memory. <laughs> but you remember where you learn like words from Breaking Bad and stuff. That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Not only word, not only that. I can remember the word that I learned two years ago, even the website. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's try number four. To happen. Happen. To happen. Oh no, sorry. Um number uh, four, that's four across is happen. Uh, four down is risk. Let's do risk first. To risk. It's three to words. Action. 
No, it has to have the word take in it. And take into action. <laughs> no, not that. Take a... Take a something. Take a risk or take a... Take a chance. Chance. Take a chance. Yes. Take a chance. You can also say, okay, take a risk, take a chance, take a shot, take a stab at something. Those are all expressions that mean the same thing, that you're taking a risk, you're doing something risky. It doesn't mean you're like about to stab someone with a knife, okay? <laughs> it means like you're taking a stab at a problem or you're going to do something risky. Uh, let's look at number four across. Happen. Take, take place. Good, take place. Good. Take place. What about number five? Take. <laughs> Become interested in. Yes, take. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, for example, maybe there's something that you're interested in doing, but you're not sure if you're allowed. So someone says, oh, I don't, you're talking to your mom, and you're like, mom, can I go to that party? You go, I don't know, you better take blank, blank mom. with your father. Some like alone, consents, no. Where? With? Take up with? Yeah, take up with. So you take something up with someone. So if I were to say, Mom, can I go to that party? She might say, I don't know. You better take that up with your father. So if there's something that you're interested in doing, um, you have to go and talk to someone to get permission to do it. Take it up with that person before you are given permission. Forget? I decided not to talk. Did you have a question? <laughs> you just kind of made a sound and then it was like... <laughs> no? Okay. Okay, let's uh, go on. Number six. Assume... Uh, sorry, assume, not assume. Assume control. I think you guys know this one. I think. Take over. Yes, good. Take over is to assume control or take control, you can also say. Take control. Uh, what about number seven, to leave? Take, take away. Take away. <laughs> Not take away, take... Out. Take out. Take off. off. Take off. Take off. Take off. To take off is like to run away. Take Actually, off. It has run a off. A lot of meanings, not yes. just leaving. Out. You can also tell someone to take off. If you're Canadian, you say. <laughs> Do you remember freaking yeah. take off poser? <laughs> um, take, if you tell someone to take off, it's like go away, leave me alone, take off. Um, not the nicest thing to say to someone, right? <laughs> A little bit rude. Um, what about number eight? Resemble. Take. <laughs> Alike. Alike. No. If you look a lot like your grandmother, take a so that when, she, when she was a kid, you might say, oh, wow, you really take mm, your grandmother. Take a... After. 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 You take after. For a second I thought it was a swear word. No. <laughs> no. So if you take after someone, it means you really resemble them. It's usually someone in your family. No. <laughs> um, oh, Firk, and I see what you're saying with taking off a job. But you actually say, I took, I took off, or I took the day off work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't really say, I took off my job. You say, I took off work. So I didn't go to work that day. Kind of a different meaning. Okay. Um, number nine, believe me. We've got 
I'm saying for sure. There, now you have the first letter of each word. Take two Take letter words. my words for it. Yes. Take my word for it. Have you guys heard that before? Mm -hmm. So it means you should believe what I'm telling you. Listen to me. Take my word for it. Trust me. Trust me. I'm okay, the man of my word. Yeah, I'm a man of my word. That's another one. I'm a man of my word. Are there any other expressions to use in, this, in this such a situation? Take, okay. Take my word for it. For it is two words like that. Trust me, believe me, um, I'm a man of word. Let me see. See if I can find some other ones. I don't know. <laughs> no, I can't really think of any other ones besides, yeah. like, believe me, trust me. <laughs> if whenever I think of some, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it happens a lot whenever I ask an expression. You I know, would... because I, I have to think about it, and I don't always think about them on the spot. You just say them, and it's Actually, like... When someone asks you such a question, like, your mind blows up, and you can't yeah, think Yeah, it was like, all of a sudden, I just kind of shut down for a second, <laughs> and I'm like, I guess I better speak, because I'm still teaching. <laughs> um, okay, do you guys have any questions about take idioms? I'll put them back up. Are these ones all clear? Yeah. Okay. Let's do one more, and then if we have time, we'll do some uh, making some phrases and stuff with some of the idioms that we've done. So, life idioms. These are idioms using. Um, Kill someone. The word life. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, these idioms all have the word life in them. The first one is kill someone. Get over it. It actually it's it's also a take idiom, actually, funnily enough. Take care of. No, to kill someone is not to well yeah, I guess you can say that. <laughs> take I, take. Like, yeah, I took care of them. It's like, oh <laughs> no, it's uh a little bit different. It has to have the word life in it. Take a life. Take a life. Uh, take a life. Take a life is to kill someone. Um, number two, lasting forever. Long life. Close. Lifelong. Uh, lifelong. <laughs> yeah. Life so if something is lifelong, it's everlasting is another word. Um, ever. Oops. Everlasting. Oh, I can't spell. Everlasting. <laughs> there we go. Kind of fairy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What about number three? Garment used to support a person in water. What is garment? A garment is a piece of clothing. It has to have the word life in it. A piece of clothing you use. Life brick. Li oops. Life. Uh. Jacket. Yes. <laughs> life jacket. Okay. Uh, you guys know what a life jacket there. is? Yeah. yeah. You have there. there. I was thinking about a garden. No, a garment. Garment. <laughs> Used to support a person. So garment is like a piece of clothing. So something you wear to support you in the water. It's a life jacket. Um, we also call it a life vest. Um, okay, bye Perseus. A life vest, life jacket. That's more common. Life vest? Yeah. Life, G yeah, I don't know. I think they're probably about the same. Put your life vest on. That's it. Uh, I think it's in Titanic where the guy like runs around for you in that in the meantime. Put your life vest on. <laughs> oh, <that's so laughs> you crash into an iceberg. Um, number three down. During a person's living period. 
Lifetime. Lifetime, yeah. Good. And number four, a rope used to save someone. Life. Lifeline. No. Oops. Lifeline. Good. A lifeline. Um, a lifeline is also. Have you guys seen the show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Yeah. 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 They ask you if you want to use a lifeline. You get three lifelines on that show. Oh. Ask the audience, phone a friend, and 50-50. Those are your lifelines. So they've kind of taken the expression, a lifeline that you would, like, cast out to someone to grab onto. Um, and they're saying that those are, like, figurative lifelines. Um, number six, never. Never. So if someone asks you to do something and you're thinking, there's no way I would ever do this, you would Maybe say, no. You can do over my dead body. Yeah, that's a good one, over my dead body. Um, but this one has not to be about, life. about life, not about death. <laughs> life. Not, not in this life. Nothing. Close, not blank, blank, in life. This, in this life. No, it's not in this life. In your life. In your life. In your life. Not on your life. Not on your life. It means like, um, oh, would would you, uh, there's a guy really bothering me. Would you just go, like, punch him in the face, please? You're like, what? No. Not on your life. It means, no, I would never do that. Are you crazy? No. But you can say, I kindly ask you. Yeah, and then you could still say no. <laughs> Not on your life. <laughs> okay, uh, number five, continuing strength and force. Continuing strength and force. Um, we use it, it's two words. You might not have heard this one. Life is the first life word. Life. Yeah, good, lifeblood. So your lifeblood is like what you live for. Why are you still alive? Your, your lifeblood is like um, the thing that matters the most to you in your life that keeps you going. Okay. Um, driving force. Yeah, your driving force, yeah. Uh, number seven, actual dimension. Two words. Oops. What do you mean by actual dimension? Real dimension. Real, um, I can't say the word or it'll give you the answer. Size. Size. Life size. <laughs> life size. <laughs> so, um, if something is life size, it means it's like in the same size as a human. So maybe if you have a really big TV, you could advertise it by saying, um, all of the people on TV are life size. It's so big. Right? Uh, and then there's also the expression larger than life. Have you guys heard that before? Mm -mm. If something is larger than life, it means it's bigger than life size. Um, so like on, on a movie screen, if you go to the cinema, when you look at a movie screen, that's larger than life when people's heads are like blown up. Um, number eight, biography. Life story. Okay. Life story. Okay. Any questions about the life idioms? No. no. Exit. And I'm going to give you guys the document with all the answers with like the list of idioms that we did. And then I want you guys to make a few phrases using some of these idioms. Is it game so, time? Is it game time? No. <laughs> it's practice time. It's study time. <laughs> um, hopefully it'll work in a second. Okay. Oh, you planned everything. Yeah, well, all I did was view the solution and wrote down all the answers. <laughs> so if you call that planning, um, I'm just going to delete these. You don't, you don't really need the links. Um, okay, so we've got...
check food, take, and life idioms. There's a list of all of them. So I'd like you guys to take a minute and try to make one sentence, one check idiom, one food, one take, and one life. If you can make it like a sequence where it kind of makes sense somehow, like it's a little paragraph, that would be great. If not, it's okay. You can make four separate sentences. Um, maybe I'll change the settings so you guys can actually write it here. So you can actually write right on the document. Write right on the document. Um, so you can write them underneath where I've got the list there for you. So just try. Um, there's the link again. You might have to refresh your Google Drive, but you should be able to actually write in the document. Let me know if it's not working. Um, but I'd, again, like you to write four sentences, one with one of each idiom. Idioms. How, how can I use larger than life as an adjective? As a what? Adjective. You could say um, Elvis Presley is larger than life. What? You can you can describe a person as being larger than life. You can say that um, like he's such a famous celebrity that he's not even a person anymore. He's just like an icon. So he's larger than life. It's a part of the another way you can use the expression. Whoa. So you can use it as an adjective to describe a person. Are you guys able to type into the document? Mm. I don't know. You didn't give us permission. Oh. I'm trying to. I think you have permission. I see a few people typing on there. I'm not one of them. You just try to refresh Google Drive. Um, okay, I'm in. Okay. So down at the bottom, you just put your name, and then you can try writing your sentences. I'm going to share this as we're looking at it. Okay. Um, I see we've got lots of viewers. So if you're watching from outside, um, you're welcome to do this as well. So just try to write one sentence for each type of idiom. If you can make it kind of make sense, then that'd be great. If not, then that's okay. <laughs> Who's highlighting my sentence? I don't know. <laughs> Please don't touch anyone else's uh, writing. It gets a little bit confusing. Unless you're me, and you need to add a space. <laughs> I only see, I guess that this is Firkin writing? So I only, I only see Firkin writing. So um, does everyone see the document? I see some other cursors are in there. Lots of people are watching. So. Come on. Okay. Okay. Um, just wait. I'm, I'm putting numbers. So pick a number and that's where you can start writing, okay? <laughs> There you go. The Upper Crust Canuck Society. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I guess that means Firkin has number one spot. So you can pick a spot, uh, write your name, and then you can write your sentences there. Well, we are watching Titanic on our life-size iPhone 4. She started to tell her life story to us. She was a child. In this competition, let's take a look. Take a look at Federico. Take a look at the checklist. 
to see if we have done everything. Good. Perfect. Can I say it smelled fishy? Is it okay? Um, you can say like something smelled fishy, yeah. Um, or the situation smelled fishy. If you just say it smelled fishy, it kind of sounds like there's literally a fish smell in the house. Mm. So um, try writing the sentence, and I'll I'll tell you if there's like a way we can maybe adjust it a little bit. What was the meaning of sour grapes? Sour? Sour grapes? Sour grapes. Means you're like bitter about something. Mm. You're unimpressed with something, kind of bitter about it. Um, maybe you're resentful towards someone. Mm -hmm. I've tried to do everything to egg him on to win the contest. Perfect, Federico. I'll finish the homework for next week. You can take it for granted. I'll finish the homework. Okay. I don't understand what you're saying here with take it for granted. That you have my word, I, I will finish. Pardon? For example, that you have my word, I will finish for the next week. Oh, okay, so you don't say take it for granted, you say you can take my word for it. Oh, okay. Take my word for it. Um, to take something for granted is like not appreciate something that you're given. That's mm -hmm. taking it for granted. Um, for next week. And you probably want to make it as another sentence like that, or like this. You can take my word for it. Awesome. Very good. Okay. Check it out. I'm okay. Good. Check out. I'm going to check out the calculus one from the library. Good. So like a textbook. Good. You can check something out from the library. Uh, uh, how can I? Okay. It smelled fishy even for a corny person. She took a back. Okay, so you can say she was taken aback. Um. By the lifelong membership for the Iceberg Museum, which sank... Oh, okay, for the... ice... for the museum dedicated to the iceberg, which sank the Titanic. <laughs> what? I don't even know what's happening with this paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> She was taken aback by the by the lifelong. Okay, so she was offered a lifelong membership and then taken aback by that. Yeah. By, by being yes. offered um, a lifelong membership. That sounds yeah. a bit better. <laughs> okay. In case, okay. You don't need the here, Federico. You can just say in case uh -huh. land in the water. You can use your life jacket. Perfect. Perfect. And you need a comma right there as well. In case we land in the water, you can use your life jacket. Very good. Um, fishy. There's something fishy going on here. Good. It's late. I'm going to take off. Perfect, Yusuf. Justin is a nice guy. One day he's going to go to a bank near his house. But because some nightmares haunted his dream. Okay. A life jacket on the wall was a thing she would never take in her life. Okay. Like steel? Mm, I don't know. It's going or so... use or... Excuse me. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> okay.
but because some nightmares have haunted his dreams, his good dreams, so he want wanted to try to take a chance for stealing money there. Take a chance by stealing money there. Good, Justin. Very good. Okay. Um, lifetime. Uh, Yusuf, it's these. These shoes, not this. These shoes are, because it's plural, these shoes are working. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. You could say um, these shoes will last a lifetime. Okay. I'm done. Okay, let's take another look. Um, a life jacket on the wall is a thing she'd never use in her life. That was the day which the first time she took... What? <laughs> that was... So you could say that was the first day... Or that was the first... Time she took a life, or the first day that she took a life. Some say, some say, you can get used to it after your first try. It became her lifeblood. Oh, great! Thanks for again, <laughs> for again somehow managed to turn me into a murderer in his um in his writing. Okay. Um, um, let's take a look at Federico. Why didn't you clean the house? I've taken for granted your mother will be angry. Okay. Yeah. So you could say, why didn't you clean the house? Um, you've, you've taken your mother for granted. Um, and this would mean, like, um, your mother always cleans for you. Why don't you clean up? So taking her for granted is, like, she always does all the work and you don't appreciate it. So why don't you clean? That's kind of how it would work in that situation. Mm. Um, yes. Good. Okay. Awesome. Yusuf, what were you typing? <laughs> I saw that before you deleted it. <laughs> okay. Dexter was her hero. Yeah, probably. All right, guys. Um, we're just about out of time. Uh, you guys are free to download that document if you want the list of idioms that we looked at today. Um, here's my Facebook. <laughs> um, if you want to, if you like the page, and you can message me there, and I'll post updates about Kalingo classes. <laughs> I'm still watching you guys type. <laughs> um, cool. So I'll be teaching again on Mon. Oh no, uh, not in.